Hey guys, it's Dino. In this video, I'm going to start with games. It's gonna be a simple, really instructive game, and it is going to be commented heavily from the first move. Uh, in this game, Black won, and I would encourage you to stop a video after every move and think what Black played. So we are going to start with e4, this is one of the best first moves because you are fighting for the center, center is really important because uh, when you put pieces in a center they, uh, they have a biggest impact, their power is maximal. For example if you put this knight here, it can go, imagine if the knight is here, he, he, can, he can go here, here, see, here, here, so 8, 8 square actually, that's a really powerful knight, and if you have a knight maybe here, at the corner of the board, he can go only this square and this square, just two squares, and that's a really lousy knight, weak knight, that's why you want to fight for the center, center squares, because who controls the center is it's gonna have a better chance to win the game. So of course there is other possible moves like d4, it's also a good first move, also accomplish the similar things, maybe even c4 because you're fighting for the central squares. These four central, central squares are key. Also with this move you are opening lines for your pieces, now this bishop can go out, this queen can go out, uh, what do you think the black should do, how he should reply? The move is e5, e5 also does what e4 does for, for white, Open opens up these pieces, fights from the center. Next move, knight f3. Knight f3 is really good because you are developing a piece and also you are attacking something, you are attacking the pawn. And that's a really good thing if you can develop a piece and also attack the pawn. Also the general rule is to develop knights before your bishops because bishop already is doing something, he is controlling all of these squares a knight from this position is controlling only three squares and it's not really doing much at the starting position so that's really good, of course also you are developing towards the center of the board why you should develop knights before the bishop, because you know the knight is gonna go here uh, commonly the best squares for the knight in the opening are those two and for the bishop you really don't know maybe maybe bishop is gonna go here maybe he's gonna just develop in the, here maybe he's gonna develop here so you don't commit early in the game where bishop is gonna go and instead you just develop knights knight c6 you're also developing the piece and protecting this pawn. Of course you don't think of moves like d6 because it's gonna block your bishop. You don't do this because you're weakening your your king. You don't this do do this because you're blocking your bishop and also uh, you shouldn't develop your queen before your other minor, minor pieces. These are minor pieces or even this, you don't bring, bring your queen early because is it can be attacked by other pieces and they are gaining tempo or time on your queen, they are just attacking it and they are developing pieces, for example this, this, maybe this, and then they are developing their piece and you gotta move your queen again, instead of developing yourself, which is really bad. 
maybe you would consider this move, but it is blocking this pawn and this bishop now it's it's hard for him to get out. Maybe he has to do this or something, but there is no need for that. So definitely this is the best move in this position. Along with this, but probably this is this is the best. So now whites play c4, putting bishop in a center, attacking these critical squares, attacking the f7 pawn, which is really important. Sometimes an opponent will sacrifice a piece for this pawn just to bring your queen out and then he can attack your king and maybe checkmate you. This is really good square for the bishop. The answer is bishop c5. We are also developing a piece in the center. This move is, has similar benefits as this, so I'm not going to repeat it. And maybe they thought this is good. It's not bad, but maybe this is better. This is not really good because you're not doing anything here. This is good because you're in the center. This is one of the best. You can also develop a knight, but bishop, bishop is really good. So you want to move every piece once in an opening. Don't move like like knight here, for example, because you already played with this knight. It's a general rule, of course, it can be broken, but in this position, maybe you should develop your other knight, you know, in castle. So just try as fast as possible to get your pieces out, castle, and then start an attack instead of moving the same piece over and over again. Now, white's play c3. This is a common move, but it's, it is not so good because it breaks the principle of uh, development because you should develop your pieces before your pawns. This is this square uh, is reserved for the knight and not for you know the pawn. But this move has some advantages because white is hoping to play d4 and then have a really strong two pawns in the center. That would be really really good for him if we allow it. So the move is queen e7. The reason for this move is because white cannot play this move right now because you're gonna take and he cannot take here because you're gonna take this pawn and then you're gonna move this piece that is attacked. So that's a smart move. You are actually developing the piece. I told you not to develop queen before other pieces, but in this case, the queen, it is smart to develop it at the, the second rank, in this case seventh. On this rank, it cannot really be easily attacked and also it has some purpose. White sees that and plays castle. And now it is threatening again, this move. What do we do about it? We play d6. D6 strengthens the center and also you are opening lines for this bishop. You could have developed this knight too, but this is a legitimately good move too. Now white plays d4 with the hope that we will take this and then he will have a strong, strong center that would be really good for him. In this case, if we take and he takes, we cannot take this pawn because of this. This is a really common trap and you, your queen cannot move. And the move is bishop b6, really really good move because you are keeping the pressure on this pawn. Now three pieces are attacking this pawn. White can push this pawn but you are gonna just come back and this bishop is blocked. This bishop is alive now, has a really good diagonal. That's bad for him. And also he cannot play moves like this maybe because you're gonna go take this pawn. That That's really good. Taking is not good because now he has really good pawns. And then this move c3 was justified. Instead we just move our bishop and wait for him to do something. A4. This is a bad move. 
because he has to develop his pieces, not pawns. He's breaking the opening rules. He's going for an, for an attack instead of developing his pieces and then attacking. A6. We have to do this. We are breaking the rule of uh, first moving our pieces in the opening and not pawns. But in this case, we have to save this bishop. A5. Attacking our bishop, obviously. Also a bad move, because he should continue developing his pieces. We played bishop a6. If you thought that, that we could take here, you were wrong. Because he takes, takes, and he has this check. And he's gonna pick up our bishop. He's gonna have a two pieces for his rook and his pawn. It is an advantage for him. So taking that pawn wasn't good. And he was hoping for that, that gonna take this pawn. We do not bite, we just put our bishop to a7 to keep this diagonal and move on with the game. In this position he played h3, another bad move, because again he should develop his pieces, but he was scared of this pin, which is really bad and you're gonna see how we are going to explode this weakness. Some really really good players like Lasker, Alekain and, and other players said that you should keep these pawns in front of your king. They are protection of your king. And when you move one of these pawns you are creating a weakness. And also you should keep your knight here and this structure is really good for protecting your king. Knight of six. Developing another piece, attacking this pawn. He plays takes here. Take with the knight. Taking with the knight is better because we are putting the knight in the center and also attacking these pieces. He takes, we take with the queen. Now again we are putting the queen in the center. This queen controls a lot of a lot of squares and has a potential to go to attack the enemy king. Our position is much better because this knight is gone and this knight is gone but this knight was really important for, for protecting his king and now we are have we have a chance maybe to attack this pawn is attacked so he tries to protect it now we cannot take of course because the same thing you know that the next move is bishop h3 really good and we are actually showing that this h3 move was really bad because it weakens the king and now we are gonna attack him and we're gonna punish him because of this mistake this is the perfect game to show you how the small the strategical mistakes should and can be punished when you know a strategy and when you calculate the things. So he took and in this position black played queen g3. He cannot take us because this bishop is really really useful. Now he has to go here. Queen h3. We scoop up this pawn too. Why not? Just take the pawn. King g1. Knight g4. We are going forward with, with our knight and also threatening the mate. So you always want to uh, play the moves that are forcing, forcing opponent to do something. For example, if now you're threatening something and he has to do something about it. There's no way he can play moves like maybe this, because the next move is checkmate. So we are forcing him to do something and also uh, these moves are easy to calculate because we play this move and we know that he's gonna play move like this. This is the only move to defend. This and then we should maybe we can calculate the next move. So this move was played. Protects that for the, for the moment. Queen g3. King. H1. Bishop f2. Why bishop f2? Because if he takes it is gonna be check and we're gonna take the queen. And any other move, we are threatening this move. 
and it, it is going to be checkmate. For example, if he plays move like this, we're gonna play queen h3, uh, knight h2 in and mate. So there is there is no chance for white to defend this position. So to summarize, develop your pieces. Let's see that game again. So develop your pieces, develop your knights before your pieces. Don't uh, don't move too much pawns. Maybe just two to unleash the power of your bishops and your queen. Attack the center. C3, queen. Don't develop your queen too far early in the game because it, it is going to be attacked. Castle, d6, unleashing your bishop, b6. Keep the pressure, also the principle. Don't take something if it is not uh, in your interest. a4, a6, a5, bishop a7, h3, develop another piece. And now punishing him for a bad, bad play. Play forcing moves, attack your opponent, and this is the end. So this is my actually first analysis. Probably it is not best and maybe I'm, I was slow at some moment, but thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and see you in the next video.